Last week, Pastor Garen and I went to a student's baseball game. Zach. <laughs> we went to a student's baseball game, and it was such a fun time. It was a really good experience, kind of getting to hang out in the stands, talk to people, watch all the students who were surprisingly good for being middle school baseball, especially our team who destroyed the other, the other team, who destroyed the other team. Go Cascade. And um, it was just a lot of fun. And as I, as I was watching the students um, as they went up to bat, I started to notice something in the different way that some people, you know, stood at the plate. And I noticed that some people, some of the kids, they were hitting the ball really, really well. Like Zach. Zach was hitting the ball really, really well. Like, like solid line drives, solid grounders, getting out there with serious power. Like it was, it was going out there. But some of the students, it felt like they were really, they were really kind of struggling a little bit. I could do a, a handheld, yeah. Some of the students, like me this morning with my mic, looked like they were struggling a little bit. <laughs> looked like they were struggling a little bit. And I just kind of wondered why, because there wasn't, there wasn't a lot, like, it, there wasn't a huge difference in, like, size and strength and stature between the ones that were hitting well and the ones that were not doing so well. But then I started to look a little bit closer. And what I noticed was that some of the students... When they got up to bat, you know, they, oh man, this is hard to do with a mic now. They pull, they, they <laughs> when they swung, they put the same amount of energy at the beginning and they carried it through all the way to the end, all the way around. They followed through on their swing. And so when they hit the ball, when it hits it about here and it carries all the way out, it maintains the same power, it maintains the same momentum all the way through. And so they hit the balls farther. They hit the balls faster. They had good follow through. The other students who weren't doing so well, they didn't. And so what they would do is they would take the bat and then they would swing it. And then right about here, right about where they think they're going to hit the ball, they start to slow down a little bit. They don't follow the bat through that continuous motion all the way around. Why do they do that? Why do they slow down? So they, don't hit them, hit, so they don't hit each other in the back. You slow down to keep yourself from getting hurt, right? You want to stop the bat before it gets here. But some t like, you don't want to hit yourself in the back. Though when I was in baseball, I, I wasn't the best. <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't the strongest kid. I don't know if you could imagine that. Um, <laughs> but my coach actually told me, Christian, if you don't hit yourself in the back, you're getting in trouble. Because I needed to put as much strength into that ball as possible to be able to get it to go anywhere. So he said, you have to maintain power all the way from here, all the way to the end, beginning to end, even if you hit yourself in the back. Some of those kids weren't doing that. And in, in, they were looking forward to stopping it. They're trying to stop it back here, but they end up slowing it down over here. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so therefore, their follow through was not very good. Follow through is commitment to an action. It's seeing it through all the way to the end. Not stopping short, even if it's hard. Even if you hit yourself in the back a little bit. Even if it takes some effort on your part. And so today, we're going to be looking at the story of Abraham and Isaac. And how Abraham had to follow through on something that was kind of tough. So turn your Bibles to Genesis chapter 22, verse 1. Genesis 22. And a little bit of background information. So as Pastor Garen mentioned last week, God had made a promise to Abraham. God had covenanted with Abraham and with Sarah that he would give them a son. And that son would be Isaac. And through Isaac, they would have millions of descendants. Previously, Abraham and Sarah had been barren. They weren't able to have kids between the two of them at all. And so God promised that I will give you countless descendants to rival the stars in the sky and the sand along the seashore. God made that promise to Abraham and Sarah. And he said, those descendants, 
they would come through Isaac and Isaac only. Say Isaac only. Isaac only. only. And these descendants would be a great nation. And through them, the entire world would be blessed. So knowing that, God allows them to have a son. They name him Isaac. He grows up. And then this happens. Genesis chapter 22, verse 1. Sometime later, God tested Abraham's faith. How many of you want that to happen? Yeah, it happens though. Abraham, God called. Yes, he replied, here I am. Take your son, your only son, yes, Isaac, whom you love so much, and go to the land of Moriah. Go and sacrifice him as a burnt offering on one of the mountains, which I will show you. And so the next morning, Abraham got, up, Abraham got up early. He saddled his donkey and took two of his servants with him, along with his son Isaac. Then he chopped wood for a fire for a burnt offering and set out for the place God had told him about. Down to verse 6. So Abraham then placed the wood for the burnt offering on Isaac's shoulders while he himself carried the fire and the knife, and the two of them walked on together. Isaac turned to Abraham at some point and said, Father? Yes, my son, Abraham replied. We have the fire and the wood, the boy said, but where is the sheep for the burnt offering? Yikes. And Abraham says, God will provide a sheep for the burnt offering, my son. And they both walked on together. And when they arrived at the place where where God had told them to go, Abraham built an altar and arranged the wood on it. Then he tied his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. And Abraham picked up the knife to kill his son as a sacrifice. Now, I just want to pause there with the knife raised in the air over his son Isaac. And I want to ask you guys a question. How could Abraham do this? Why would God tell Abraham to do this? Is Abraham so callous? Is he so hard-hearted that he's willing to give up his one and only son? And is God so fickle, changes his mind, changes his heart, that he's willing to go back on his promise? Because, right, Isaac was the child of the promise. It's not just that Abraham was going to have millions of descendants to rival the stars in the sky, the sand on the seashore. It's that they were going to come through Isaac. So would God go back on his promise? No. No, 100% no. And Abraham knew it. And Abraham understood that God would not go back on his promise. We look forward in the New Testament. The New Testament actually shines light on this. Romans 4, verse 20 says... Romans 4, verse 20 says, Abraham never wavered. Say, never wavered. wavered. Not once in believing God's promise. In fact, his faith grew stronger. And in this, he brought glory to God. God loves it when we take him at his word, when we believe him, even when the circumstances seem to contradict what God is saying. We're saying, God, I believe in you more than what's going on around me. God gets glory. God gets fame. God gets honored through that. He loves it. Verse 21, he was fully convinced that God is able to do whatever he promises. Whatever he promises, because God always follows through. What he started at the beginning, he will carry it through to completion. He will not stop short. He will not hesitate. He will not hold back. 
in completing his promises, in fulfilling his promises. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so knowing this, believing this with all of his heart, Abraham is also able to follow through with what God has told him to do, even though it was hard, even though you know it was painful, because his faith in God was bigger than his feelings. His faith in God was bigger than his feelings. His trust and understanding of who God is superseded any feelings of anger, any feelings of doubt in God, and any feeling in sad- of sadness at the situation. And you re- we all read the story, right? It's kind of weird. Like Abraham's like super stoic this whole time, right? Says, God says, Abraham, go and sacrifice your son. And Abraham got up in the morning. And it details every step of this journey, all the way from Abraham's tent to Mount Moriah, where he tied his son. And I think the Bible does this to show us he had so many chances to run away. (laughs) He had so many chances to say, no, God, I'm not going to do this. I don't trust you. I don't trust the situation. This goes against your promise. I don't get it. I don't know what's going on. But he doesn't. And that is so intentional for us to see thousands of years later. Where's the emotion? Where's the begging and the pleading of a parent to save their child? It's not there. A couple chapters before this, God tells Abraham, hey, your nephew is living in a bad town and I'm going to destroy it. And Abraham gets down on his hands and knees and begs and pleads, do not kill my nephew. Now, I love my nephew, but I love my son more. I'm sorry, that's just how it works. Yet Abraham begged and pleaded for God to save Lot, his nephew, but he doesn't do that here. Why? Because his faith in God was bigger than his feelings. He knew God would always follow through on his promises. So it didn't matter. If Isaac was the one, Isaac was the chosen child through whom God would bring blessing to the entire world, through whom we would have millions of descendants, stars in the sky, sand on the seashore. Isaac was the one. He knew God would follow through, and his faith was bigger than his feelings. He knew God was good. He knew God would follow through on his promises, and so his feelings didn't matter. Everyone say, my feelings don't. I'm just kidding. (laughs) Kind of. I mean, uh. trust in God, not your feelings. The Bible says the heart is deceitful above all else. Everything else is less deceitful than your heart. I'm sorry. Our hearts are liars. They're always trying to trick us to get us to do what we, we want. We get filled with sadness. We get filled with anger, and we're, we're led to sin. We're led to disobey God. Have faith in God more than your feelings. I'm not telling you to be emotionless. God gave us feelings for a reason, but he wants us to listen to him more than our feelings. Amen? Amen. Let's turn in our Bibles again to Hebrews 11, verse 17. The New Testament has so much to say about this story. I've only given you a couple of examples, but it just informs it so well, and it's really necessary for understanding what's going through Abraham's head right now. 11 verse 17 Hebrews says, It was by faith that Abraham offered Isaac as a sacrifice when God was testing him. Abraham, who had received God's promises. There it is again. He had received God's promises. He was ready to sacrifice his son Isaac. Even though God had told him, Isaac is the son through whom your descendants will be counted. And verse 19 is the clincher of this passage, the clincher of this sermon. Abraham reasoned that even if Isaac died, God was able to bring him back to life again. Do you see this? Do you see his logic? Do you see his reasoning in this? 
Abraham was promised. He was promised by God. You will be the father of the multitude, and it will come through Isaac. It was a promise from the mouth of the Lord, no doubt about it. So even if Isaac died, that promise will still be fulfilled. God will bring it to completion. God will follow through. Well, how can that happen, Abe? Look at the situation. How could that happen if you kill your own son? And Abe says, I don't know. I don't know. God must be able to bring him back from the dead, I guess. I don't understand what's happening right now, but I believe in God. God is going to do something here, so I'm going to follow through. To Abe, Abe, to Abraham, it was impossible that God would not follow through. I wrote Abe in my notes because Abraham is longer and I needed another line. I didn't think I'd actually say it. (laughs) To Abraham, it was impossible that God would not follow through. More impossible than breaking the laws of nature. Right? Because this had not happened before. We look forward thousands of years in the future. People have been raised from the dead before through our gods. We're like, yeah, that could totally happen. Abraham didn't know that. Abraham didn't have that context. That context, for all he knew, the end was the end. The end was the end. Yet he knew God was great. He knew God was greater than everything. He knew God was greater than the grave. And honestly, looking back on his life, Abraham had seen God break the laws of nature before. Right? Isaac, his son, given to them when they were 100 years old, way past the childbearing age. And it wasn't just that they were old. They had been infertile since the beginning. They were never able to have kids together. Never. And so God did a miracle in their life by even bringing Isaac into it. When when Abraham looked at Isaac, when he looked at his son, you knew. He just knew in his heart, this child is a gift from the Lord. I could not have him by myself. God can do the impossible, and he can do it again, baby. He can do it again. And I have a timeless truth for you all to write down, to never forget Okay, you ready? When you don't understand how God can do something, the issue is with your understanding, not with God. I'm going to give you two minutes to write that down, to tie it around your neck and never forget. Okay? When you don't understand how God can do something, the issue is with your understanding. It's not with God. Abraham didn't even get it right. He presumed that God would raise him from the dead. But as we will see in this story, that's not really even what happened. Abraham just knew God's promises would hold true and he would follow through. Wow, that all rhymed and that wasn't planned. I'm a poet. And I never knew that before. He is perfect in all of his ways. You got that? That was a a second level joke. Um, God is perfect in all of his ways, and he has proven himself time and time again. And I think that's part of the reason, if not the main reason, why Abraham was able to follow through. He knew Isaac was a gift from God. And if God could do the impossible once, he could do it again. So it was his faith in God that allowed him to raise that knife, to hold it over his son, his only son, and be willing to follow through. It takes faith to follow through. Amen? So my question for you guys today is do you have the faith to follow through? Could you have done what Abraham did? All right, let's, let's pause for a second. Let's, let's, that's kind of a toughie. Let's lower the bar just a little bit, sacrificing your child. But could you do what God tells you to do? Are you able to follow through? Could you follow through on what God has called you to do, knowing the promises that he has made? 
because he'll follow through on his promises. The real question in this equation, the real question in this story, is are we willing to follow through in our faith, in our actions, in our obedience to the Lord? Or will you, like those batters at the plate, stop short? Will you not carry it to completion? Maybe you start out strong. Like, I'm going to put some serious effort into this Christian thing. I'm going to put some serious effort into this follow-through thing, this faith thing. But then somewhere along the way, you get a little freaked out. I don't want to hit myself in the back. I'm just going to, I'm just going to pump the brakes a little bit. You know what I mean? I'm going to slow this down. I don't want to get hurt. I don't want to look stupid. I don't want to do what God tells me to do because what will everyone else think? And so you start slowing down. And so your actions on earth, your life is not as effective as it could be because you stopped short. You hesitated. You didn't follow through. If God calls you to pray for someone, I don't know if it's a friend. I don't know if it's a stranger. Will you approach them and pray for them? That's an easy one, guys. People love prayer. Sarah's a nurse, and she prays for random people in the hospital all the time. She can get in trouble for it. It's not part of her job. People all, pretty much always, right? They always want prayer. They're in the hospital. They're like, I'll take what I can get. It's so easy to pray for someone. But will you pray for someone knowing what God has promised you? He said, ask for anything in my name, and I will do it if it brings glory and honor to the Father. If God called you to share the gospel with someone, to share with them, listen, we are, we are all sinners. We've all fallen short, but God made a way for you. He made a way for you to have eternal life. Would you share it with them? Would you follow through knowing that God has promised you he will fill you with his spirit and you will be his witness to go to the, he will give you power to be his witness, to go to the ends of the earth, at least to the ends of Auburn, to share the gospel with, it, with them. So you're not doing it on your own power. You're doing it through the power of the Holy Spirit who lets you share the gospel. You're not going it alone. That's been promised to you. If God called you to put your life on the line, we hear a lot about people in foreign countries where Christianity is illegal and they're lined up against a wall and told, and, and told, do you believe in Jesus? And if they say yes, they kill them. Are you willing to stand up for God, even in that situation, knowing that God has promised you, John three sixteen? He loved the world so much he gave his only son so you can have everlasting life. You know this life, you have been promised that this life is not the end. So therefore, I am going to invest my life. I'm going to give my life for God. Would you be willing to do that? Knowing also that we know even death cannot hold God back. Even death cannot hold him back. God will follow through on his promises, but you need to follow through in your faith. Now, as we, as we start to close, why don't you all stand up? Every head bowed, every eye closed. How many of you want to be better at following through in your faith? We know the promises God has made, but I want to follow. Th I want to be better at following through. I want to be better. If God speaks to me, he says, go, I go. If he says, speak, I speak. How many of you want to be better at that? Raise your hand. Yeah, a lot of us, if not all of us. Amen. How many of you want to hear better, hear God's voice better? I'm up there too. I want to know what his will is. Yeah, let's pray. Jesus, you are so good. Lord, we, want, we see how your promises will always be fulfilled, and we want to follow through too. So Lord, I pray that you would give your servants strength and courage to follow through. When you say go, they go. When you say speak, they speak. Give us your courage and fill us with your Holy Spirit again. 
give us power to testify of your name in Jesus' name. And Lord, I pray that you will just help us all to hear your voice a little bit clearer. Remind us that we need time to set aside to listen to you. Lord, remind us of your word. Your word is your voice. Reveal things to to us in scripture that you want us to do. Help us, Lord. Walk side by side with us. In Jesus' name, amen. And you can all be seated. We're not quite done. Because if you remember, we left the story. Abraham's like raising the knife, right? He's been there for like 30 minutes. So let's finish. (laughs) Let's finish the story. (laughs) Genesis 22 again, verse 11. So Abraham picked up the knife to kill his son as a sacrifice. And then the story doesn't end there. Verse 11, at that moment, the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. Yes, Abraham replied, here I am. Don't lay a hand on the boy, the angel said. Do not hurt him in any way. For now I know that you truly fear God. You truly know that I am good. You truly know that I will always follow through on my promises. You have not withheld from me even your son, your only son. Then Abraham looked up. I love this. Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught by its horns in a thicket. So he took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering in place of his son. And Abraham named that place Jehovah Jireh, which means the Lord will provide. The Lord will provide. The Lord will always follow through on what he has promised. He promised that Isaac would be the child through whom Abraham would have countless descendants. And so he provided a substitute sacrifice, a ram with its head caught in thorns to take Isaac's place. And this ram is a picture of Christ. It is a foreshadowing of Christ who was hung on a cross bearing a crown of thorns to die for you, to take your place on the altar, Because by God's standards of righteousness, we all fall short. And so there needs to be a payment. And God, just like he did in this story, just like he did with Isaac, God said, I will not let you pay it. I will pay it myself. And so God sent his only son to take the place of Abraham's only son and die as a sacrifice just like he did for you. He sent that ram. God wanted to see if Abraham would follow through in giving up his only son, because God had always planned to give up his for you. God always follows through. And so I want to give you one more opportunity today. Why don't you all stand up one more time Every head bowed, every eye closed. If you are not a Christian in this room, you are lying on an altar. And the punishment for your sin is coming, like a knife to be plunged into your chest. Because God has said, I cannot live with sin. You need to be cleansed. There needs to be a sacrifice. And I have provided that for you in Jesus. If you only accept him as your Lord and your Savior, Jesus will take your place. And his blood will cover all of your sins. And you will enter into eternity with him. Your life will have no end because remember, our God is greater than the grave. So is there anyone in here or online that wants to accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior today, you say, I want to follow through in faith. Would you raise your hand today? Yeah, I see those hands. Yep, yep. 
great and online. God hears your, God sees your hands too. Well, what you do is you turn from your sins, you turn to God, and you let him lead. And we're all going to do a prayer together that, 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 that says that. So let's all pray together. Say, Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I've fallen short. And Lord, I turn from my sins. I don't want to live that way anymore. And I turn to you, and I make you my master, my savior. Save me, Jesus. And Jesus, I will follow you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And if you prayed that prayer, the answer is always yes. The sacrifice has already been given. You just needed to take it and look forward to life and eternity with us and with God. Amen. All right. Well, if you did, if you did mark that, would you just mark um, on the back of the Connect card, there's a part where it says, I received Jesus today. We just want to follow up with you because we know Christianity, this is a walk that you, you, you don't want to do alone. We want to help you. Or we want to help you with it. All right. We all love you guys. Bless you. Amen. Praise God. Well, I am encouraged, first of all, that our God, he loves us so much. Man, every time you hear that story, it's just, wow, wow. So know you're loved. Amen. Amen. Well, our ushers are going to come right now and collect those Connect cards. If you would just pass those in. They've got a bucket there. And um, we would, uh, again, like to know how we can be praying for you. So do share those needs with us. And then we are going to get our room ready for uh, Together Nights tonight. We are having it tonight. So if a few of you could hang out and just help us set up a few tables in the room, that would be awesome. All right. We will be back here next Sunday, 1030, like usual, and we will be ready to worship together. Amen. Have a fantastic Memorial Day. Have a great week. We look forward to seeing you next week. God bless.